Good morning, students. I miss a Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on measurement and units, today's lesson will be about density. In a previous lesson, we have defined the physical quantities of mass and volume. And today, what we're going to see, we're going to tackle a very common misconception. And this is summarizing this question. For instance, is a piece of lead, uh, lead, piombo in Italian, is always that heavier than a piece of wood? And I think it's pretty clear to you that the answer is depends. And depends, of course, on the how much, on the amount of these two physical substances, lead and wood. Because, of course, if you take um, for instance, a small bullet made of lead and a very, very big tree, which is mostly made of wood, it, it's pretty clear to us that um, the tree will be heavier than the bullet. And, when, and first of all, remember when we talk about heavy, we're referring to a quantity known as mass. Later on, we'll discuss in detail what's the difference between mass and weight. So, it is not always true that an object made of metal, so something that we um, usually um, link to something very heavy, it's always heavier, so it's more massive, has more mass than an object made of something, say, like wood or ice or water. On the other hand, it's also true that a bigger object is not always heavier than a smaller one. So it's clear from these examples that we need to define a new quantity that it's neither mass or volume, but it helps linking the two. So something that tells you that if you have this amount of a given substance has this mass, well, well you can work it out somehow. And this quantity is density. Remember, um, we said previously you know, that volume is how much space an object takes, so how big it is. Mass, on the other hand, is how much stuff, uh, how, 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 much, uh, how many particles, how many, what the type of particles, and how they're linked together, and that it gives you mass. Now we have to combine these two things together, and again, if you look from the point of view of the constituents, or whether these substances are made of, namely molecules, we define density on how closely these molecules are packed together in a substance. So, if you have a substance where the molecules are more close together, that will be a dense object. On the other hand, if we have a substance where the molecules are more loosely connected, very, very much spaced apart, that object will have a low density. From the point of view of the physical substances that we have defined so far, density is defined as a ratio, division between the mass of an object and its volume. And this makes perfectly sense because you would imagine that a more dense object will have a bigger mass. On the other hand, a much denser object, since the particles are more close together, will tend to have a smaller volume. So, the bigger the mass, the bigger the density, the smaller the volume, the bigger the density. Now, this is what we call a word equation. Uh, you probably met one of those already in chemistry. And you also know that a chemist, as well as a physicist, prefers 
not to use word equation but symbol equation. So this is exactly what we're going to do today. We're, we're moving from using words to using symbols. And this is actually the equation that we're going to use when we're going to deal with density. Now m, small m, is pretty obvious, we know this already is the symbol for mass, as well as big V is the symbol for volume. What is a bit strange for you is this symbol here, it looks a little bit like a P, but it's actually a Greek letter, it's a Greek letter rho, it's the equivalent of our R, and this is widely used in physics textbooks, so the, like the one you have, but also in college textbooks, and it's used as a symbol for density. Now density is obviously a physical quantity because it's defined as the ratio as of physical quantities. Has a definition, we will learn how to measure it and obviously we'll have to give it a unit. Now density doesn't have its own special unit but it's defined as the ratio of the units for mass and the unit for volume. So again, it's pretty obvious that the base unit for density will be the kilogram, base unit for mass, over the base unit for volume, that is, the cubic meter. Now, in most of the cases, in most of the real uh, life application, including the exercises and the labs we're going to do in class, we're going to use this other unit, so what I refer to as the more common unit, that is the gram over the cubic centimeter. Now, finding the density of an object is a good way to uh, identify the substance, the material that that uh, object is made of assuming that that object is made only of one material. And here we have a few examples of density. In your textbook you'll find more. If you look over the internet you'll find as many as you want. This is just a few examples. And just to give you an idea on how big densities are, we look, go from a very less dense object, a, very, uh, not, uh, a substance where molecules are really very much spaced apart, that is air. Air has a density of 0.0013 grams over cubic centimeters. That means if I take one cubic centimeter of air, that cubic centimeter, that this volume of air will have a mass of 0.0013 grams. That is very, very small, and that is not a surprise for us. If we take liquid water, so water at uh, say 4 degrees Celsius, the density of that is exactly 1. And that is really because the original definition of mass comes from the density of water. But this, so this is no coincidence that the, density, that the density of water is exactly 1 gram of a cubic centimeter. And, and, and already you see that in this condition water is a thousand times more dense than air. Moving from a liquid to a solid, aluminium, which this is a very common metal, we use that a lot, and the density of aluminium is 2.7. Now that point, at this point uh, you would expect there is, that there is a pattern here, and the pattern being a gas will usually be less dense than a liquid, which in turn will be less dense than a solid. And of course, you have some counterexamples because, of course, if we take ice, so water in the solid state, we know already that ice is less dense than water. We can experience this every day. If we take um, a cup full of liquid water, put it in the freezer, take it out after a few hours, you see that not only has turned into ice, but that the volume has increased. So that means since the mass has stayed the same but the density has decreased. So we have a solid which is less dense than a liquid. But even more interesting is the metal mercury. That you know that at room temperature mercury is a liquid. 
Despite that, it's a very, very dense material. It's one of the densest elements that are out there. So it has a density which is 13.6. It's um, all, more than four times more dense than aluminium, just to give an example. So, yes, there is a pattern, but no, keep in mind that there are some exceptions. Now, most of the time, you will be asked to find the density of an object. So, you will measure the mass of an object, you will measure the volume, and that will be our next lesson. And then, from that, you can find the density and therefore try to identify the material that object is made of. But that is not always the case. There will be cases when you will be given the type of material. So you will know the density and you'll have to find one of the other two quantities. For this reason comes in handy what we call the magic triangle. The magic triangle is a way of rearranging an algebraic formula, like the one for density, mass over volume, in a way that you can find one of the other two variables. And it works exactly this way. Now, you see the three variables, density, mass, and volume, and what you need to do in order to use this triangle is to cover up the thing you want to find. I'll give you an example with density. If I cover density, you will see that the equation is exactly mass over volume, like we saw before. But let's see if it works for the others. If I want to find, for instance, the mass, I will cover up the mass and look here, you have density times volume, which again makes sense because the denser an object will be, it will be more massive. And the more amount I take, so the bigger volume, I will also increase the mass. So mass is given by density times volume. Finally, if I want to find the volume, again, I will cover up volume in the magic triangle and I'll see it is mass divided by density. Uh, this is the first time we uh, meet the magic triangle. This will not be the last time because we use magic triangles in a lot of physical formulas. You'll see it use it for speed, we'll use it for force, we'll use it for pressure and so on. So, what was the learning goal, actually, the learning goals of this lesson? First of all, define the density of an object, that means, so giving the definition of this physical quantity. Second, apply the equation that links mass, volume, and density, and we're going to work more on that. Next, and final lesson for this unit on measurement and units will be how we can measure the volume of an object. Goodbye.